Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Morale Booster with John Ubud. And today I have with me a serial entrepreneur. Uh, his name is Israel. Israel is the co-founder of Vintage Point 360. Uh, Israel will be able to tell us more about what his company does. And I strongly believe we will be able to learn one or two things from this entrepreneur. So, Mr. Israel, thank you very much for joining us on this show. Uh, could you please tell us who Israel is? Sure, absolutely. Well, first of all, John, thank you for taking the time to invite me on this wonderful platform. I think we share very similar values and ideals when it comes to a way of approaching life in general and uplifting others. So, I kudos to you. Uh, in, in a short summary, I was born and raised in Haiti. Um, small uh, country in the Caribbean and um, after spending my first 18 years there I moved to Atlanta Georgia to attend Emory University where I studied business and from that point on is where it started clicking in my head that um, I have to start thinking about what I want out of life and although I'm still trying to discover that what I've realized is that I want to give back to my community in a meaningful way and in order to do that I have to be a business owner right. when you're in a career track there's nothing wrong with that but when you're specifically in the industry career track where you're working for other people your time is limited and because your time is limited it's harder to give back to your community and truth be told john i feel like my purpose on this earth is to create as much time as much free time as possible for me to work on giving back to my community in this specific instance it's haiti because Haiti's going through a very tough time right now uh, because of instability. And so I definitely want to, as you say, for people which you continually bring hope and bring a sense of belief, I want to do that for, for the Haitians back home. So quickly transitioning into what we do, uh, VP360 is a digital marketing agency. We focus on mostly everything that would encompass modern day marketing. So website development, ads, uh, but really what we love to do is work with small to medium sized business owner to work on their online sales funnels and that helps them kind of generate traffic to either their website or to create an email listing for, or for their um, customers where we can then work on you know, client acquisition. Having said that, uh, I, I will say that entrepreneurship is a, is a daily grind and one thing you have to realize is not to be fixated on the idea of being an entrepreneur or an idea of a business that you want to pursue at all costs. You have to be flexible. Mm -hmm. And in that flexibility, mm -hmm. I, already under, I already can tell that a VP360 for us is a stepping stone into really understanding what it means to be a business owner, how, what it means to manage teams, what it means to manage people, what it means to manage relationships, and use what we learned from that and, and transpose it into a, a, a large scale manufacturing operations, hopefully within the next five years back home in Haiti. So that's a short version of that. Awesome. Thank you very much for that presentation. Sure, absolutely. So, yeah, um, you are the co-founder of Vintage Point 360. Correct. Is your partner a friend and a relative? So we're, so we're actually, my business partner's name is David Hanoon. He, he, we met on the second day of college. Oh. So he's been, you can say he's one of my best friends. One good interesting thing to really understand about nurturing business relationships is, as you probably know, John, it's always a good thing to find people who compliment you, not people who, are, who have similar strengths, but people who, who, who are strong in areas that you're weak at. So David and I are a great team because I, I want to say I'm more of the big vision person. I'm, I'm more of the, the speaker, while David is, is more of the analytical guy that does all of the number crunching, all the financial modeling and all that kind of stuff. Right. So this combination has allowed us to kind of have a full picture of what it means to, to run a business. Right. So um, having that synergy is paramount. And it seems that's what you looked out for before you went into partnership. And yes, it is very key. You know, I guess yes. people that 
if you must get into any partnership, you have to look out for things that complement each other. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily have to be the same, but you know, one person has to have a certain skill set that would complement for the other persons. That's precisely. Big, yeah. Precisely. And that goes into even marriage in general, you know. Right. Um, if 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 you have two people who are hot tempered, that is not gonna work. Right. <laughs> so to your point, it's really interesting how the human psychology work and I think we're wired to 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 work or efficiently that way. That's correct. So how did you guys come up with this business idea? So first we we're big we're big fitness enthusiasts and we said well we're gonna start up a smoothie um, chain on the, on our college campus at Emory. Well we we quickly did the math and the startup cost was around like seventy five to a hundred thousand dollars. And so we're like, what can we, what's the lowest startup cost in, that can provide revenue? And it was digital marketing, which digital marketing is extremely powerful. Even if you don't want to do it full time, it's a, it's a tool that can allow you to build a site income. You know, you have one or two clients paying you $500, $1,000 a month. Boom, you have 1000 to $2,000 more to play with. So we're like, well, that's probably the, the, the way to start. And so we, we actually bought a, a, a huge amount of resources through different marketing gurus and online professionals to try and first understand what it's about. And then I believe, I want to say in, um, we graduated in 2016 and late 2017, early 2018, we, after really starting, after understanding what Jitta marketing was, we felt comfortable enough to officially um, go go live and, and pursue clients. Right. Well, you guys are not doing badly at all because first of all, a lot of people find it difficult to start. Mm-hmm. You know, it could be as a result of certain limiting beliefs, you know, and when you have those limiting beliefs, it brings about that mental block. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's always very difficult to get those things out, except you're working with somebody who has the experience. It could be a life coach mm-hmm. or, you know, somebody with experience who can help you do that. But you guys didn't, you didn't wait for anybody to help you. You knew what you wanted and you went for it. And that is life. Well, I will say that to your point, the support system is 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 key, um, critical. I think that very few people in this world have enough self confidence to do with without anyone's help. And truth be told, I I classify myself as highly risk seeking. So I'm the type of person who will lose fifteen thousand dollars trying to invest in cryptocurrency. But for me, that's just who I am. How many people are like that? I, I, I mean, from my friend group, my from going from my whole family down to my friend group, I'm the only one, you know? And so if you're trying to make something happen, most of the time you can't do it alone. And I didn't do it alone either. And, and I'm on the opposite spectrum. And so I think that if people really are trying to put their heads around um, huge uh, tremendous big goals, then they're going to need some sort of support. And if they can't find that support within their existing realm of relationships, then they need to find it elsewhere. And to your point, it can come under form of mentorship, but it also can come under form of someone like you who, who have only worked with people that are trying to achieve that and that can share some insight on that. I think that's, that's very crucial to push through the initial failures because you're going to have a lot of those. That, that is true. You know, you just said something. It's not easy to become an entrepreneur. You know, a lot of people keep saying, you know, I'd love to own my business. Probably they feel they're tired of the nine to five jobs. Well, I keep telling them, when you're an entrepreneur, you, you don't only work nine to five, you work 24 hours. Yeah. You know, so... Yeah. There is a saying that you should, if you're currently on a paid employment, you should use your nine to five to finance your five to nine. Because <laughs> you, know, you, do, you do your regular employment nine to five. 
as an entrepreneur, you still have the remaining 5 p.m. to 9 a.m. to hustle for your business. That's, wow, that's, you're right. Yeah, you should use your 9 to 5 to fund your 5 to 9. Wow, that that's crazy. deep. That's actually the first time I've heard that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and um, another thing is a lot of people want instant gratification. And that is where the problem lies. So how did you guys overcome that right. initial right. challenge? Of so I think that the, oh, here's, here's, a, here's a catch. One, in this world nowadays, with social media, with social media platforms, technology, man, I mean, we want everything right now. Yes. You know, I mean, even we're talking about dating relationships, us men, a lot of us, we don't want to work for the cookie anymore. We just went right away. Right. Now, it's a whole different topic, but you apply this mindset and mentality in the business world, it's the same thing. Um, the first most important thing, and you probably know that, John, is you have to start with your why. Why are you doing things you want to do? Most people will tell you, I want to be rich. Well, if you want to be rich, you're going to fail. You're not going to get there because right. money is a great motivator, but it's not enough to push you out of your comfort zone to be broke for the first five years to keep going after you've failed 20 times, hoping that the 21st time will be it. Right. So I started with, I'm not going to lie. I'm like, you know what? I want to be a millionaire before 30. And that was the wrong starting point. And that led me to try out other ventures that were, I don't want to say get rich quick avenues, but that were that created an illusion that I could achieve it with, with putting out minimal work. Once I realized that I had the wrong anchor, I said, well, what's really important in my life? In my life, I want to be a great dad. I want to be a great husband. And I want to have time to give back to my community. And so I told myself, this has to be my driving source in whatever I do. And so that led us to digital marketing where I realized that I had to educate myself for a whole year nice. before launching myself in that. But I knew that it was worth it because I'm using my entrepreneurial aspirations to, to and I'm going to add that to, to the use your five to nine to, uh, to, to fund your five to nine, use your five to nine to fund your life purpose. Right. That's and that's what I want to do. Right. And that's how I see entrepreneurship. And that's how I see having cash flow from your five to nine to allow you to knock out your purpose and mission. Because I'm a firm believer that there is a God. If you don't believe in God, you have to believe in self accountability. Because one day, you know, between the day we're born and the day we die, we have a dash. And, and most people will do absolutely nothing with their dash. Right. You know, and, and the people who change the world are those who've done one thing with their dash. And so that's what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to change the world. I'm just trying to do one thing with my dash and, that, and leave it as that. That's correct. That's a good one. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's very, very inspirational. Thank uh, you. Yeah, so how do you, how do you get motivated when you do not feel motivated? Mm, that's a big thing. <laughs> well, first I'll say this, man. I, I definitely get discouraged often mm -hmm. um especially this year i feel like you know i'm not gonna lie i have I had episodes of depression at the time i didn't call it depression but you gotta call you gotta call it what it is right. what what's helped me the most man is number one reading a lot of books um from people who are successful for people who've gone through hard things because you realize that they're, they're not more special than you or i they just have constant grit and perseverance Right. So that allowed me to remind myself, man, this isn't forever. This is, this is a moment in time. Number two, I do believe that keeping the mind and body right is important. What I mean by that is the body, you need to be, you have to have a, a healthy routine. You right. can't be eating garbage. You can't not be working out and expect your body to feel great. It doesn't work. And lastly, um, I think that you have to get your mind right. Part of getting your mind right is being spiritually in sync with your purpose or trying to find what the hell your purpose is. Um, and because I'm Christian, that would look a little different for other people. But on a more general approach, I think that, you know, doing meditation in the morning, um, thinking about things that you're grateful for to start out your day, not complaining when something goes wrong, 
This trains your mindset to, to, to be hearted. So when obstacles come your way, your mind is already strong enough to detect the BS coming your way. And then you're not affected as much as if, you know, as if you are not training your mind constantly. So these are the things that have helped me um, get through some, some, some very challenging times. Right. And again, it comes back to understanding, you know, I'm not doing this for money. I'm doing this for my purpose. So I'm ready to do the sacrifice that needs to be done. And so that's, that's what's helped me personally. That's awesome. You know, you, you, you made mention of something, you know, having a purpose. You know, I keep telling people, you should always have a reason for waking up every day. Yeah. Yes. If you feel you do not have a reason for waking up, just go out there. Look for people you can help, people who would always need you. Take it as a point of duty to be always available to help them. It could be a community service or something, but always have a reason to wake up every day. Wake up every day, I feel that's the biggest gift anyone can do for him or herself. I, I agree, and, and that's why people are stuck in, in lives that they hate. It's because they live life without purpose. And at this point, you're not really living life. You're just existing, and, you know? And, and for me, that's wild because I think that everyone, I believe that everyone in their DNA has the ability to be great. This whole spectrum of, you know, on one person, people um, run the world, you know, you got the next 10% who, who are rich and then the, the rest, 90% are mediocre or, or live average life. That's a man-made construct. It's, it's, you know, we woke up one day, we say, you know what? Some of us are going to be mediocre, some of us are going to be great, and, and we're all going to accept it. What if, what if none of us accepted that notion and said, you know what? We're all going to be great. Well, I'll tell you this, John. The world will be much more advanced because at is, as it is today, I think that only the top 5 to 10% of the human population are driving where the world is going. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I try to tell my friends that, dude, all of us have that innate ability, and it's in us. But for some reason, I don't know if it's, a, it's, a, if it's an invisible veil yeah. that has almost made it that way to, because that's how the world is supposed to run, that blocks people from opening their eyes. I, I, I can't understand it, personally. Right, right. right. You know, the, the, every human being is wired to be successful, to be great. But it is how you push yourself that matters. Like you rightly said, you need to know your why. Your why is the really driving force behind anything you do. For instance, probably, you know, for somebody who likes to, you know, attend parties, you know, merely thinking of the party ahead of time makes that person happy, eager, <laughs> want to do it. So it is what you feed the neurons that you will get the result of. So if you feed yourself with happy thoughts, you will definitely always have happy results. So if you tell yourself, you want to achieve a goal, all you need to do is to have it right in there and you will be able to achieve it. If you cannot do it, that's why people go to life coaches. That's why they go to therapists and counselors. Mm -hmm. You know, I always encourage people, if you feel you cannot hold yourself accountable for your goals, it's always advisable to reach out to either a mentor, a life coach, you know, a counselor, Mm -hmm. Yeah, so do you utilize any of those? Um, I've had the good fortune to, I want to say I have a few indirect mentors. Um, one of my, one of our clients, uh, we, we actually, I met him on a plane, on a plane ride, and we started talking. And this led into business, and, and that led into a relationship. And we realized that, I realized that I'm, he's who I want to be in 15 years or and he 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 saw that i am who he was 15 years ago right <laughs> so sometimes i will say man talking to him is refreshing because 
it's a it's a realization that everybody has gone through the hard road and there's no shortcut. And I will say I don't explicitly have quote unquote a mentor or or life coach or um an accountability partner would be my my business partner. But I will say having mentorship and quality people in your life is definitely something that I would recommend big wow. time. Um, and, and if you don't have access to, to that mentor, um, a, a life coach or someone who's done the things you're trying to do is invaluable. I mean, it's priceless. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Yes, it does. Okay, so uh, what are your projections? What are your plans for the next five years? Yeah, now you you have a great you asked a great question, man. And I I've, I've been thinking about this a lot because I'm like, you know, the new decade is coming in, and time is not waiting for neither you or I. Right. And to be honest, when you're super driven, you're never satisfied with where you're at now, but you understand it's not about being satisfied. It's about enjoying the process. So for me right now, the next five years looks like one. Next year, I'm moving back home to Haiti to start understanding the culture, to start understanding the professional world. That's key for me. Two, um, fall 2021, start an MBA program. I think that you know education system is flawed, but an MBA at a top 10 college in the US will give you access to so much resources and you can really be whoever the hell you wanna be. Um, and I'm using this as a backup plan because if I do go with the business route <laughs> through Haiti yeah. and it, it fails yeah. and I have a family by then, I still need to provide for my family. Right. At least an MBA will give me the opportunity to get back on my feet, find a job, get paid, and still work on that entrepreneurial grind. It's just a, it's just a minor setback to, to, to the entrepreneurial lifestyle. Um, so after I get my MBA, hopefully build, start building the most important thing for me, and that's to build um, a family because, um, sorry, I think Amazon oh, okay. is, is on the, well, what's her name? I forgot her name, but the robots that, that talks now. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Seriously? But um, yeah, <laughs> Alexa. <laughs> Alexa, okay. Um, so it, it revolves around creating legacy, man. Um, after the MBA, come back to Haiti. Uh, venture out in the what you call you know industrial hemp production where we're using hemp to create um, car 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 parts to create cement to give jobs back home. It, for me, the five years is all about trying to build legacy. So I've have it planned out, but I understand that I'm not the master of my own life. Things change, yeah. so I'm flexible enough to you know if i have to be in the states next year then so be it but i'm never losing sight of why am i doing these things that i that, I, that i'm doing and am i being intentional in being closer to my purpose and you see me talk a lot about purpose 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 because purpose hits every facet of your life that's it you know, it hits every, fa literally, because I want to move back to Haiti, there's some women that are wonderful women that could be wonderful partners, but I can't date them because they won't want to move back to Haiti. So it affects even romance. So, <laughs> so that's my anchor, um, is, is being purpose-driven and, and walking closer to that purpose within the next five years. Awesome. <clears throat> that's key. Uh, well, persistence is key also. In whatever yeah. we do, we must make sure we are persistent. And when you always have that why, it helps you realign with your goals. If for, uh -huh. if for any reasons, you know, you, you, you derail from the goals. Having the why helps uh -huh. you align with your initial goals. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I fully, fully agree with you. Now, I, I, I'm going to flip the script on you, and I'm going to ask you a quick question. I okay. think I already know the answer, but I'm really curious. Okay. When you reach out to people to come share their experiences, who have you found tend to be more responsive than others? Uh, well, <laughs> well, so far, everybody has been able to reach out to a different spectrum 
you know, like the people who would resonate with your own program or your own interview might be different from those who would also, you know, resonate with some other persons. Mm-hmm. That's the whole idea. You know, no two human being is the same. Mm-hmm. Right. So in terms of your question, uh, so far everybody has been doing a wonderful job in terms, wow. in terms of what the platform is, you know, designed to do. That's awesome. That's it. <laughs> That's awesome. No, I, I figured because um, we, you know, we need more of these platforms, and it needs to be. It need, I if if these platforms could 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 be the forefront instead of hip hop. Nothing wrong against hip hop. I love hip hop. It's a great form of art. Right. But but mediums that that are more uplifting than uh, others, platforms that are really degrading the human mind. A lot of people would benefit from that, that's honestly. That's so, true. and that's why I, I love, I love what you're doing, and and I hope, um, it while we're talking about speaks to someone today. Thank you very much for that. I really do appreciate it. You know, my job is to inspire change, and uh, I will use people who are willing to work with me, just like yourself and other people who have been coming on the episode to really impact that change that we want. This is the little part I can do. Mm -hmm. I wake up every morning, this is my why, I wake up every morning knowing that I would inspire change. Mm -hmm. That is is what drives me, that is my drive, that is my motivation. Mm -hmm. Family, I have friends, I have so many clients who call me every day telling me that, you know, they feel motivated by hearing my voice, listening mm-hmm. to my program. So it gives me joy. That's awesome, man. Right. <laughs> That's awesome, John. I'm really proud of you, man. And I hope you can carry that energy full throttle into the new decade coming around. Certainly, certainly. This is my calling. And I, I, I hope when next I call you, we will be able to come on the, on the show. Hey, man, I, I, th- I think it will happen for sure. And hopefully the next time you call me, um, you know, I'll be a millionaire by then. Yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah, it, it is possible. You know, you're yeah. already on that path. You know, what you're doing mm-hmm. now is building a legacy. Mm-hmm. And the, it is key. You just mm-hmm. have to be consistent. You have to always know your why. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at times, like you said, at times you could derail. You know, you might mm-hmm. feel things are not happening the way you want them to. But when you have your core value, which you already have, which is the reason why you started, you definitely would realign with your initial goal. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. That's how it works. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> I receive it. <laughs> right. Okay, anyway, thank you for joining me on this program. Sure. Uh, I look forward to having you on another episode in the future. You will be a millionaire. <laughs> thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And to everyone watching and listening to John, I would highly recommend to at least, man, book a book a session. A session. Pick yeah. his brain because because just by talking to you for the last 30 or 40 minutes, um, I've been invigorated and it, I, I've learned um, several things just by talking to you. So thank you to everyone and thank, thank you, John. I appreciate thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you to my viewers. All right. Thank you. God bless you today. Bye-bye.